There's a lot of different ideas out there as to how to make good small space design work. And today we're about to visit an amazing tiny house that breaks all of the rules in the most brilliant ways. Hey Samara, how are you? Hi Bryce, good thanks. G'day James, how's it going mate? Beautiful Bryce, thanks. It is a pleasure to meet you both and wow, what an absolutely striking home you have here. Thank you. So what was it that inspired you to build a tiny house? Yeah, well we were living in a pretty small house already and it became sort of something that we've been exploring through Dad's work, he's a building designer, and then I've sort of been working alongside him doing interiors for a long time and so we actually decided to move out of our little house and back in with Mum and Dad and build this on their property as just a bit of an experiment in how much we could pare back a home and still make it livable and comfortable. So um, it's pretty small as far as tiny houses go, but yeah, it's been an interesting journey and we actually even surprised ourselves by how much we love living in it. So what size is the tiny house? It's on a 4.8 metre trailer, and then the bathroom is sort of a separate component, which is still movable via a crane. So it's actually built in three separate modules then? Yes, so it's a bathroom, kitchen, and the bedroom there. At the moment, this is the format we've really sort of been able to fit in this space, and we love living here. It's, it's been fantastic. Excellent. And the style of this home is just so cool. This all black exterior is just incredibly striking. Thank you, yes. We do have a bit of a thing for dark spaces. It's been our retail shop that we run and a few of the other houses that Dad's designed over the last few years have definitely moved in a darker tonal direction. And there's just something very nurturing about dark spaces, which I really love. And the use of the timber, the stone, the metal, it's also elemental. Yeah, we love our natural materials and we also use a lot of recycled materials as well. But I think we're fundamentally humans just want to connect back with nature, or we certainly do. The look of this home, it almost has a very Japanese aesthetic. Can you talk to me about the design? Yeah, well, um, most of the design, particularly the outside, has all really been done by my dad. So we were involved and sort of got our say along the way, but he had a vision. Interestingly, he's never been to Japan, but I think that his aesthetic is very aligned with that Japanese Zen sort of aesthetic as well. So yeah, I feel like it comes across and a lot of people say that when they see the house, so yeah. One of the things that I notice about this from the exterior already is that there aren't a lot of windows and the windows are quite minimal. Mm. Can you talk to me about that? We originally did this house with the idea that because it's modulated, we'd pull it apart a little bit and put bigger decks in between it when we eventually moved it out to a, to a larger block of land. And so that would mean that a lot of natural light comes in. But with the way that it is now, it does feel like it hasn't got a lot of windows. So we've kind of um, popped a few more in, like this one's a new addition, and brought a little bit more light into the space that way. And it actually works quite well now. You get sort of a lot of like flood in from the bathroom through the kitchen and bedrooms in the morning. And so you're living here now on your family land? Yeah, this is mum and dad's property and they've got their house up the back there and my sister and her fiance now live in that um, home with them. And we've just finished another house that's owned by my aunt. So they might even move into the garage part of that. So we're all kind of living on the one property and dad always had this vision to have the family all together on one property. And we always kind of rolled our eyes at it and, and joked that like, as if that's ever gonna happen. But it's actually turned out that the longer we're here, the more we love having the support of our family. and. The the more we even see a future where we've got kids and actually being close to mum and dad and my sister and that support as being something that really should be valued rather than looked as sort of a backup plan. And having someone coming back to, you know, after a long day of work and actually having someone to speak to, having someone to connect with, yeah. some being able to cook together, um, yeah, you can't put a price on that. And yeah. I, I find it almost bizarre now that we've decided to become more individualized, more atomized, like living in our own little separate dwellings. Mm. This this does feel a lot more natural. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'd change it from here, yeah. if given the choice. The house is obviously beautiful, but you've also done a lot of really lovely landscaping around the place as well. 
family effort. I'd yeah, say. it's been definitely a team effort. We sort of wanted the home to feel like it's a part of the natural environment. It's kind of coming out of the earth and it's got that sort of feel to it. And just being surrounded by greenery is just nice. You feel better. Yeah, okay. you There's really do. something really, really relaxing about just looking out your window yeah. and seeing all these plants, ferns, uh, you know, herbs just kind of sticking their way through. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's magical. Now, what you've done with this bathroom is really interesting because it's sort of outside and sort of inside. It's this lovely yeah. hybrid, isn't it? It's probably my favorite bathroom I've ever had, actually. I, I love an outdoor shower, but then, yeah, the rest of the bathroom we obviously wanted inside. So we kind of resolved it so the door opens and you can have it as one whole bathroom with the shower outside and the toilet and basin inside, or you can close that door and that toilet basin area is fully enclosed. Um, so obviously if it's raining then that makes more sense. And so for water, toilet, you're hooked into all the city infrastructure? We are for now. Uh, there was an idea that we could make this as off-grid as we needed to make it, but for now, it is just sort of easier to sort of have it plugged into whatever is in the area already. Good idea. And especially when you've built such a small, tiny house, there's a lot to be said, I think, for separating the toilet a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it helps make it more livable for us. And for that reason, we also separated the kitchen and the bedroom pavilion as well. It helps bring the outside in a little yeah. bit, which you're always interacting with the world around you. You're not just closed off from it, which I think is pretty important. And it's definitely something we've become to realize the longer we live here is that how much we actually appreciate the surrounds as well. Mm. Well, already from the outside, I can see that this home is something very special and I cannot wait to see what you've done on the inside. Can we take a look? Absolutely. Great, after you. Oh, this is incredible. One of the things that I immediately notice walking mm. in here is how dark everything is, but it just works so beautifully. It's been an interesting trying to balance the the light and dark and so we went a little bit lighter on the walls than we were initially planning with like this sort of concrete kind of texture but i love it and it does get because we've got it open at both ends a lot of natural light when it's sunny does kind of pour in here which is beautiful so we're kind of relying on that natural light a lot and when there's none of that, it just feels like a beautiful dark cave, which is cool too. A cave which we can sort of fit everything in as well. Yeah. We haven't mm -hmm. got much, but it, it all fits. The concrete look walls are very cool. How did you achieve this? It's not actually concrete per se. It's panels of chipboard or like, you know, excess timber that's actually had concrete poured through it in very sort of thin sections. And it just means it's quite light to build with, quite pliable, but when you actually get it up there, it does look like almost you are just in a concrete room. It's fairly new, I think, on the market, but we found it pretty early and we just knew that this is what we wanted to make our kitchen out of. Very clever. And it's just so beautifully offset by all of the black timber and cabinetry in here. Yeah, we had these big chunks of cedar wood, which we felt would just work perfectly for the shelves. And I love having that open shelving sort of style. Very hard to clutter up when you've got everything on display. Yeah. And it just it. makes everything easy to access as well. And we hid the ugliest stuff like the fridge and all that sort of under sink stuff and just kind of left out all the, the pretty things. And again, standing in here, one of the words that immediately comes to mind is elemental. You've got the solid timbers, the sort of stone look walls, utilizing the clay and all of your beautiful on display pottery, the cast iron. It really does just feel so solid. Yeah, I think we just love natural materials and that earthiness that these kinds of things bring in. And aside from being beautifully styled, this also looks like a very functional kitchen. Yeah, it's pretty good. It doesn't have an oven, but the stove top works pretty well for most of the things we cook. We also use our pressure cooker a lot. And we've even managed to fit in a coffee machine there as well. We've even managed to fit our, our cold drip coffee tower in too, which is a little bit of a unique thing that we love to have. James actually builds them himself. So yeah, so it, it's functional for us. It works for what we need it to work for. And it works in collaboration with living on a family property where there are bigger kitchens that we can use on the property as well. And yeah, the cold drip coffee, that looks very alchemical. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I built that one as one of the early models really, but it was, uh, I can't remember what, I think I'd made this a little bit thicker. So I just decided to drill this one into the wall, always mm. have it ready sitting there. And uh, yeah, at the end of its drip cycle, which takes usually a few hours, it's really, really smooth coffee, which if you love black coffee, is absolutely fantastic. And then you've got a bit of seating over here as well. 
Yeah, this is where we eat most of our meals and we use it as a bit of extra prep space, this bench, when we're in here. James does most of the cooking, so Yeah, I good. mean, like doing a full Sunday roast or like doing something on massive scale is sometimes a little bit tricky. We can usually make it work, but uh, yeah, get it as messy as you want. It's easy enough to clean and um, yeah, these two benches generally work pretty well for what we need. And then behind you there, you've got this wonderful transitional space between the kitchen and the bedroom. Yeah, we really like to separate the, the different rituals in a home. So the ritual of cooking and eating is sort of one element and then sleeping, reading, watching TV, that kind of thing is just nice to have in a separate space. And so having that little bit of space in between those two things allows for you to kind of step out of one zone and into another one. And it also makes it really easy to live with two people without feeling like you're on top of each other. Like if James wants to be cooking dinner, for instance, and I've got some work to do on my computer or I want to read a book or something, we can kind of have those separate things going on. I also didn't like the idea of having all the kitchen smells in the bedroom as well. So I like having those two elements separate for that reason too. Absolutely. It looks like you've got a bit of storage there as well. Yeah, so my wardrobe comes out onto that space and then James has got his clothes in the bedroom bit there. We also have some storage under the bed as well, which is handy for things that we don't use as often. And then you've got the shutters there as well that let in a little bit of light and they also add this really lovely artistic rustic feature to the home. Yeah, I really like them. Dad picked them up at an antique shop somewhere around here, I think, and we just sort of charred them black so they fit in with the rest of the home. But yeah, they bring in a little bit of that light, but without sort of compromising on the privacy in that space. And you can fully open them as well, which is handy if you want to have even more light in there. And can we have a look in the bedroom? Yes, let's do it. Absolutely. Let's go. Oh, this is just lovely. Again, having the darker colors in here really just makes this space feel so cozy. Yeah, it does. I think it's particularly important in a bedroom to have a space that does kind of feel a bit cocoon-like and somewhere that you can really relax. And I feel like the darker colour tones relax you a little bit more as well. And we also really wanted the bedroom to be able to close up so all the windows and blinds can close so it becomes pitch black, as black as possible, which is really conducive to getting a high quality, like deep sleep. Um, which we find we sleep really well in here. Yeah, we do, we do. It, it feels like a smaller space than a lot of bedrooms, but at the same time, it's pretty effortless falling to sleep. Yeah. And uh, look, at the same time, it gets as light as you need it to be. So things like drinking tea, reading a book, anything you really want, it's, it's a very multi-purpose space. Yeah. It's actually one of the things that I love about tiny house sleeping lofts mm -hmm. is that feeling of sort of being safe and enclosed. And you've really beautifully emulated that in this home. We actually really prefer sleeping in here than a lot of the um, bigger bedrooms that we've had in the past, which probably surprised me a little bit as well. And you've got a projector in here as well? Yeah, we do. So it generally fits into the little nook and we can actually beam it straight up onto the blinds when they come down. So we don't really feel like we're missing out on a huge deal, not having a big TV in here or anything like that. We find it really just works with the space. Because of the scale of the home, it was important to make sure that every one of the spaces was multifunctional as well. So this room, the bedroom, we use it for, yeah, for watching our projector, um, for sleeping in, but we also use it in the morning for like meditation and our little tea ceremony set up. And I originally actually wanted to have a space that was even more dedicated to that, but we ended up trading out our old mattress for one that was a little bit firmer, um, a latex mattress, so you can kind of sit on it and it doesn't bow into too much and then we just put like a metal tray over it and that's actually like perfect for doing our little tea rituals and that kind of thing in the morning as well so the bedroom kind of works really well for that as well that's beautiful i really yeah. like that thanks yeah and so how long have you been living in the home now so i'd say on and off it's been a bit of a journey but i'd say a total of about a year and a half you know we decided to do some refurbishments like putting extra windows in just to take advantage of the light uh dealing with some of the heavy, heavy rain that we had sort of a few months ago. Uh, some tweaks had to be made there, but yeah, we've kind of come back into this for about the last two months. And now you've lived in the space for a while. How are you finding tiny house living? Absolutely love it. And I think we would always live in a fairly small home. We probably would add like an extra room just to have a living space at some point. But yeah, I don't think we need that much more than no, this. If you threw infinite money and infinite land at me, I think I'd have all the land for you know growing beautiful mm -hmm. things and then yeah, a pretty small dwelling. I don't think I could go a big house. It would just feel too empty. Yeah. The thing that made us fall in love with 
living in a tiny house was the simplicity. It was the fact that you don't actually need that much to function day to day. And we're a real believer in quality over quantity. I feel like that has been Frank's philosophy over the years as well. And yeah, just sort of aligning your lifestyle in such a cozy little space, having the materials you want at hand, all the utilities you could possibly need in a small, like very, very straightforward space. You just feel like you're living simply. You feel like you're making, you know, the absolute most of, you know, your environment and your circumstances. And I think just the, you know, the humility, so being quite humble with the space. But again, just a very, very simple, straightforward lifestyle is just mm. phenomenal. And that's, I think, why we, we both love it here. Yeah, I think as well, we both run our own businesses and we're working a lot. So to have a home that's low maintenance and easy to clean and easy to just be in. And, you know, this, this property that we live on has our parents' home, which my brother-in-law and my sister live in as well. So we've got the whole family um, here on this property. And just that kind of simplicity of having like a lot of people to support you and as well just having like an easy house to look after and to live in just makes life easy. And can we talk about the cost that was involved in realising this home? Yeah, so we did it in a few iterations and the design process took a long time. So can't really, if we do, haven't really factored in those hours, but all up, I would say it would be ballpark, probably a little bit over a hundred thousand, including like the bathroom and then the rest of the part on the trailer. So yeah. A great result. And again, just so much creativity that's been poured into the space. So much beautiful use of reclaimed materials. Mm -hmm. This really is such a special home. This whole place is just so artistic, so creative. The materials that you've used in here are just exquisite and you really have created the most amazing home for yourselves here. Thank you so much for sharing it Thanks with me. Thanks for coming. Cheers. My pleasure. I have just absolutely fallen in love with this tiny house. Within these walls, there are so many ideas that people say would never work in a small space. You've got the dark colors, the bulky materials, the enclosed spaces, but Ultimately, this home just feels incredibly zen, incredibly welcoming, and it is a space that feels amazing to be inside.